Wouldn't it be great to buy a microphone that ticks all of the boxes, good sound quality, good build quality, great features, and at a good price? Well, look no further. It's the Rode NT1 microphone. I recently picked up one of these to replace my old MXL 990, which is now battered and very badly bruised. I like the inclusions in here. They give you a pop filter, a shock mount, XLR cable, and 10 years worth of warranty. The microphone itself is also really high quality. Um, it's got internal stabilization in the microphone to stabilize the diaphragm. I think it's a one inch gold capsule diaphragm, which is really, really nice. It's got a maximum sound pressure level of 132. So unless you're recording jet plane sounds, it can almost record anything. And it's made in Australia. So, you know, uh, I get to finally unbox an Australian product, which I'm very happy about as well. Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is the name Rode. I think it stands for rodent. So the microphones are like little rodents, like little mice, right? You got like a black rodent and a gray rodent, something like that, which is pretty cool. Another reason why you might want to buy this particular microphone is the frequency response. Not many microphones have this sort of accurate frequency response and it's sought after by so many people, right? Especially professional musicians, because the sound that comes out of your, like your voice or your instrument is accurately captured and reproduced uh, digitally by the microphone, which is amazing, right? Which is exactly what you want if you're a professional musician. It might not necessarily be the case for particular singers that want things perfect out of the box. And we'll talk about that in a bit as well. Another thing we need to know is the polar pattern of a microphone. In our case, we get the cardioid polar pattern, which means we capture the sound on the very front. And as you kind of go around the axis, it rejects the sound towards the back and a little bit on the sides as well. More expensive microphones allow you to switch between polar patterns. Very cheap microphones, like they just have the omnidirectional polar pattern, which picks up all the room sound all around, right? So that's something that you might want to consider uh, when purchasing this. I personally don't think you need anything other than just a simple cardioid microphone. So you will need to know the front position of the microphone and where to point it to pick up the sound source, right? So I think that's important. Um, in very Australian fashion, they've uh, boxed this quite well. They've used a lot of cardboard and they've really gone down on the plastics, which is really cool. You might also hear some squeaking like with the, with the cardboard, it's got a lot of like squeaks and, and squeals, kind of very thematic of Rode, right? Because it's like a rodent, right? A rodent microphone, which is kind of funny. Um, here I am trying to take out the SM6, which I think is the pop filter. Now I'm not too enthusiastic about pop filters myself. I don't really like them. I prefer like those wind foam caps that you put on, on top of the microphone. But a lot of singers will probably curse me at this point and, you know, they will swear by their SM6 uh, pop filter and they like it. Either way, Rode has done an amazing job to cover any vocalist, right, going into a band scenario or recording studio with literally everything. They've even included a six meter, six meter XLR cable, which is insane, right? So if you're in one of those um, recording rooms with your band members, you know, you've got a lot of length. Uh, between where they are and where you are so you can kind of keep distance and if they're a little bit uh, rude and step over your microphone then uh, you know you've, you've got a pretty durable product with with the word microphone that'll withstand any sort of torture you also have this sticker which is really great so if you have a really bad band session and you want to take it out on the guitarist or the drummer you just when they're not watching you just stick that on the back of their uh jacket or their, their clothes or something like that, right? Just a little bit of vengeance power that Rode gives you, but I'm sure that's not the intention, of course, right? You have this blue ring. I'm not exactly too sure what it does. Maybe a singer can tell me, a vocalist can tell me what the blue ring does. I'm, I'm not too sure about that one. I won't use it. But anyway, let's unbox the Rode mic and let's have a look at what's inside. So, so far, you know, we've noticed that they give us a lot of inclusions for the price and I only paid 220 Australian dollars for this. So it's pretty good, right? They even give you this, I guess it's a, like a little pouch for your microphone, which is really nice. I would have loved to have seen the Aussie colors like green and gold, but I suppose navy blue and gold is possibly the next best thing, which is not too bad. The microphone is not too heavy, 440 grams, not too bad. Uh, dimensions in millimeters, 187 by 50 by 50, nothing too remarkable. And perhaps at some point we really should address the Rode NT1A, which is kind of like the sibling to this microphone. 
Uh, I think that's more of a vocalist microphone and I'll show you guys in a bit why I believe so personally. But for my purposes and for my usage case, the Rode NT1 was perfect for me because I record instruments. I want a natural accurate reproduction. Here is the gold cap inside, right? And that's actively stabilized by the microphone, which is amazing, right? So definitely very, very good build quality. There's no doubt about it. It's got a full metal design, very solid. Um, nothing I can say about it in any way that's bad. Here is the frequency response between the NT1A and the NT1. As you can see, the NT1A at the very, very bottom frequencies, it rolls off in the mid it boosts and at the high it boosts as well. It, those are kind of the frequencies that you want to kind of have in that way for somebody who's a vocalist or who's a singer. So if you want a microphone that sounds amazing out of the box, if you're like a streamer and you really don't care about the complexities of like anything to do with audio, just go for the NT1A. That's the microphone definitely for you, right? It's the one that's going to make you sound the best right out of the box. But if you're a musician that wants accurately captured and reproduced sound like myself, then definitely go for the Rode NT1. Either of these mics, you can't go wrong. Whichever one you buy, you'll be fine at the end of the day. Anyway, here is that precious pop filter that singers really love, which I have no feeling towards. Um, you know, it's got a plastic top and, you know, fairly well, well designed towards the, the back, you know, kind of like a metallic rod gonna kind of put that away for now <laughs> uh, we might look at that a little bit later but you know you guys saw it it's good um, here is that six meter cable really impressive six meters amazing you know um, I don't have anything like that even lying around which is really good uh, I suppose if you have if you already have an XLR cable it's you know you could have a spare one right there's nothing wrong with having a spare one I guess the good thing with this one this is a rubber cable it's very durable so like if you have very obnoxious band members that run over your, you know, cable all the time and, you know, they lug things over it, then this thing is probably going to withstand a lot of punishment. Uh, the downside is that the rubber cables have a really bad smell. And if a lot of band members are using them in a small, maybe non-ventilated room, you guys might not enjoy that very much. But uh, I'm sure they're shielded and they're very high quality. It certainly feels and looks like... Uh, a very well designed uh, microphone cable um, so you know perfect you know nothing to complain about there and then you have the shock mount which is good uh, nothing else in the box it's a full metal shock mount very high quality you know I'd say it, I'd say it's good good to great quality I don't know it's it, it's um, not there's nothing about it that's bad you know it's designed to last and it's solid on the very front you've got that little uh, attachment for the pop filter and we're gonna put that in very soon and on the back you've got the attachment for the stand so you don't have a stand included in this but you know there are stands out there in the middle you've got the ring where you place the microphone it's got a little bit of a padding which is really good to see uh, next up I think we're going to try to we're going to try to um, put it all together and, and see how we go with this one and I'll show you guys you know some of you might have probably never installed a microphone uh, how to do it but here are all the inclusions so you've got the vengeance sticker you've got the xlr cable the pop filter the shock mount and the microphone so you guys see that little golden circular dot right that represents the front of the microphone you want that one to face the side of the pop filter so just make sure you guys adjust it in the right position like i did just put it down and simply just you know screw it clockwise and it'll stick at some point it's good to go and after this what you want to do is you want to make sure that um, you've tightened everything on the shock mount and the pop filter before you begin kind of uh, twisting it in in my case i kind of didn't so lesson learned sometimes you can over tighten things but you can always go back on that a little bit to adjust uh, things to suit your purpose or your need overall it's got a very big profile it's it's quite large but feels good high quality and very nice um, I use this one with um, a road uh, tabletop stand which uh, serves me very well for the purposes that I have at home again different use case scenarios right like some people might think that this kind of 
scenario is perfect for them. Other people might adjust it. Just make sure you have a sound card if you're recording at home. I'm using a Focusrite, but there are plenty of others that you could use as well. Anyway, in the next video, we're going to test the sound of the Rode NT1, and we're going to compare it with two other microphones. I happen to only have the SM57, which is a dynamic microphone as opposed to the condenser and the MXL 990, which is also a condenser microphone. So stay tuned.